Can you explain how anxiety almost ruined your writing career? It, it almost stopped it from starting. Uh, I was a terribly, terribly anxious young person. S still am very anxious. I just actually writing has become sort of the way I counter anxiety. It's one of the few things that's totally within my control. And control is what helps, the, having the feeling of having something in your control is what helps anxiety. So um, being able to go into a fictional world or create a world or f follow a story in your mind um, was one of the few things that would prevent me from feeling anxious. And yet when I tried to write them down, I was always very self-critical. Uh, it always seemed more complicated than just making it up in your head to actually get it down on, on paper. Um, was was very difficult. And so I started wanting to write when I was 10 or 11. And I would write outlines or plans for things and write beginnings of things, but I wouldn't be able to actually finish them. Um, and I could not figure out why. The answer was anxiety. The answer was not having a process. Um, and, and it took about 10, 15 years of struggling with that and having writer's block and, and being talented, I mean, I could think of the stuff, I would write good stuff when I wrote, but I would write very, very rarely and it would be very upsetting. Um, and one of the things I had to teach myself, which is what I now try to teach others, is the importance of having a reassuring process, a routine, a, a, a very mechanical way of doing the work so that there's no anxiety involved because it's just like if you were a musician, you would practice your instrument regardless of quality, regardless of, of importance, you just run your finger over the keys over and over and over again. And if you do that as a writer, if you push yourself to just write, even if it's bad, if you push yourself to just get used to the experience of stopping and starting and starting and stopping every day for days and days and days, eventually it becomes so comforting and familiar that you can actually do the creative stuff. The creative stuff comes after the process. Uh, a lot of this actually reminded me, I eventually ran into Stanislavski's writing about actors. And I recognize that it's the same thing. I, I actually think of it as method writing. Because the idea of an actor having to go out on a stage and be able to summon up an emotion on cue every night, when it was in theater and you had to do it every night, um, was a struggle that anyone would have a problem doing. And so the Stanislavski tried to work out a process, a method, by which you can create a, a, a very mysterious thing called emotion on cue, even if it's not yours, even if you don't feel it. And that's essentially what a writer does. There's just nobody looking. But you have to sit down at your desk and somehow transport yourself into a fictional world, into a created place with people who are not you, and you have to feel these feelings and imagine this stuff that has to come out of you from you know not where. People don't know where creativity comes from. You know when you get it, you know when it's happening, but you don't know how it happens. And you can't. So what you can know is if I create this ritual, this routine, by which I'm going to always open the same type of notebook or I'm going to have the same format I'm working in and I'm going to understand the mechanics of writing, the idea of character and story and people taking action. And if you get all those things and you apply them to whatever you're writing over and over, you'll eventually become so comfortable with the process that you'll become creative. And after many, many years where I would just panic every time I had to write, now I actually find that writing is the thing that keeps me from panicking about life. <laughs> and that I'll, I'll find myself every day if I don't write, I get nervous. But um, if I do write, or if I, if I trust the process, it will absolutely take away the anxiety. I, I can, you can't guarantee much about the arts, but I can guarantee that practice and exposure to the process and creating a ritual is almost always guaranteed to make your art better. And so it sounds like that definitely didn't come right away from you. <laughs> you, you it took years because you you were enrolled in school and then you left? Because I, was, I was very lucky. I got into Yale University on, uh, there was a, a freak moment <laughs> when they were accepting very creative people without great grades. 
Um, it was in the mid-1970s, and the world was in turmoil, and things were not as stressed as they are now, I guess. All I know is I was good at English, but not much else. And I applied to a bunch of schools, and I got into Yale. And so I went. I didn't actually even want to go to college. I just wanted to be a writer. And I thought, this is just a waste of my time. But I got in. I can't not go. And I went, and it was cool experience, but by the end of the first year, I was struggling with my writing, and I blamed college. I now know what I just told you, which is that I had been struggling with my writing before college, and I was going to struggle with it after college, but for that moment, I was like, ah, oh, if I only didn't have this college thing, I would be able to write, which is crazy, because like I had, you know, four classes, and I didn't have that much to do. <laughs> but um, I dropped out uh, in my the beginning of my sophomore year, and I called my parents. I actually said to them, would you take the money you're paying college and just give it to me to pay for an apartment so I can be a writer? And they said no. Which <laughs> oh, okay. They're, they're not insane. They're supportive, but not crazy. <laughs> okay. And they said, but, you know, if you want to come home, come home. So I came home and I lived in the basement um, and I just tried to write. And all the problems I had that I blamed on college, they were still there when college wasn't. And I, was tr I tried everything. It would be like, oh, if I only had this music to play, then I would be able to write. And I would go out and buy a record. And then, oh, if I only read this book, I would be prepared to write this book. And it, a whole year went by like that. I just like terribly stressed and never getting anything done and, and trying every day and feeling terrified because I had screwed up college and now I had nothing. Um, and... One day I was, I was trying to write a play and I ended up writing the opening of a movie version of the play. I was reading William Goldman's um, scripts and, and novels and William Goldman is such an amazing and influential writer and his style of screenwriting is so catchy that I just thought, I, I can't write this play, but I can imagine the movie version of the play. I'll write it in his style. So I wrote about six or seven pages of the opening and it was the first thing I had written in about a year. Um, and it, it sort of broke open the gates um, to the concept of this, what I was saying about uh, having a process, just learning how to understand who the characters are and what the scene they're in is. And if you learn to think in scenes, then you just write that one scene. Um, so that was that. I got six pages written in a year. <laughs> And I said, I better go back to college because I need something to cover the next three years while I try and figure out how to get over this. I went back to college. This is a terribly long story. Is oh, that I'm okay? Enjoying okay. This. Yeah. What, did you so, live in? Is it? New I lived Haven? in New York. Oh, okay. Um, and I so it wasn't far from New Haven. And I they they uh, they took me back um, with some caveats. And then I had a couple of years when I was going to college and trying to overcome this writing problem, which I was working towards. But honestly, it wasn't until after that, so we're talking now years and years later, I'm still having a hard time with getting all the creativity out. And um, I was trying to write a novel, and I was working as an office temp. I worked as an office temp for 12 years on and off after college before I started to make a living as a writer. And um, during the many years of office temping, I was writing at different people's desks every day. I would have a new job every day sometimes, and I would lug my writing around in a little briefcase. And I had to learn how to write in the spaces when no one was bothering me at temp jobs. So like someone would say, go Xerox something, I'd Xerox, and I'd have like half an hour, nothing to do, and that's when I could write. And so that was like the antithesis of a good writing space. <laughs> I'm in a public office, and I have a little notebook, and I learned that if you just think about the scene you're in, you just think about the moment that this character is trying to accomplish this one thing that they are doing, because people only do one thing at a time. Characters are only doing one thing at a time. So you only need to write that one thing. And so I specifically remember there was a scene of a character, the story was that he had sublet his apartment to a serial killer. <laughs> he was a wannabe screenwriter. And he just discovered a body in his apartment, and he goes to call the police. This is back in the 80s, so it was, he had to go to the payphone on the corner. 
And I had to describe what it's like to run to a payphone in the corner in the rain and tell the police that you've sublet your apartment to a serial killer. And I just tried to imagine what it was like for a struggling screenwriter. And I had, I had at the time holes in my shoes because they had worn through and I'd put cardboard in them. So I described what it was like when the rainwater came through the hole in your shoe and what it was like to try and explain to the police why you had sublet your apartment to a serial killer. I had not done that part, but I was in the moment and that's really what it's about. Thinking about the scene and being in the moment and understanding what a character is trying to accomplish and why there's an obstacle to that. Um, in this case, the obstacle was shame. <laughs> the fact that he was a little ashamed that he had gotten himself into this position. Um, and so that's it. Character, objective, obstacle, scene. Um, there's somebody who wants something and they're trying to do it, but there's something in their way. If you have that, then you can always find that, just that little piece, then you can write. And I remember writing this scene and going, wow, I did it. The, the thing that was here is down there. And I started to learn to practice that process, the process of thinking in scenes, of understanding that you're not writing the whole story, you're just in this moment with this character. And that was the beginning of teaching myself that process. And it still took a long time, but that's, that's what I learned, that's how I survived, and that's what I'm trying to tell people now. And do you think by the fact that you had just a quick amount of time, half hour, and you knew too probably people in the office might be watching or whatever, yeah. that you, there were no excuses, well, I need to organize this and dust this before I start going? Oh yeah, when I was in high school and I was like, I'm gonna be a writer, but I can only write if I have nothing else to do all day. I mean, even when you're a full-time professional writer, you have other things to do all day. <laughs> you never get a whole day free. Um, so yeah, I had this irrational sense that I had to have the right kind of music and the right typewriter, which actually did make a difference. And, um, and now I was in the exact opposite of that. I was at a different office every week and uh, God knows somebody could come up to me at any moment and ask me to do something that I hated. And, and that's when I began to recognize that all my insistence on what I thought was the writer's process um, was actually making it harder. And that when I started to recognize that if you think in scenes and if you understand what the character wants and if you, you know, all of that stuff, that method acting for writers, you can, you can do it anywhere, anytime, which was good because I had to do it anywhere at any time. Um, and that's really actually a very valuable thing for anyone who wants to be a professional now because most professionals are gonna be working on shows, not movies. They're not gonna be writing at home and sending it in. They're gonna be in a room and you gotta be able to deal with people coming around you and with orders being given and things being changed. And the more that you can get a strong process, a sense that somebody says to you, a guy's on a bus and he's got a duck in his bag, go. And you have to write a scene the more that you can teach yourself that skill, that tool of being able to imagine a scene, understanding that someone needs to do something, and then getting used to the flow of just putting something down, imagining it and grabbing it in, in a form that you can get onto a paper, that's the most valuable skill, I think. I, if you ask any showrunner, I think they're gonna say, I really want someone that I can say, this weird thing just was demanded of us, you need to do it, go and they come back next, you know, in an hour with a scene. That's really valuable and that's what office temping taught me. So everyone should go out there and become office temps. <laughs> and would you, was there like a temporary agency that you would check in with yeah. and they would give yeah, you assignment? Called, yeah, it was called Payson People. They're long gone, but I say oh, hi wow. to them. Um, Interesting. <laughs> it, was, it was sweet. There was a very small office. It wasn't one of the big ones. And, um, but they had, they would, every week I would call in and say, where am I working this week? Um, and sometimes it was like Thursday or at this place, Friday or at this place. Um, and sometimes it was like, you're not working this week. Um, but for much of 10 years, that's what I did. Did anyone pressure you to, or, you know, did they offer you a full-time job? Because sometimes if you're a temp, they go, I like that guy. Yes. Let's hire him, you know. Uh, eventually there, there was, um, at about the nine year mark, <laughs> Um, I did actually take one of the jobs as a full-time job. The people were lovely and they knew I was a writer and I didn't, I was like, don't, if you can't handle the fact that I'm gonna be writing every free minute, you know, don't, don't hire me. 
Um, but we worked it out, and I so I worked for because the benefits helped a lot. Um, and also, actually, at that time, I was trying to learn how to do DIY filmmaking, and um, uh, small eight millimeter video had just started, and I had I had gotten some eight millimeter video equipment, and I wanted to make features on eight millimeter video as uh, practice. Just I want to make a practice movie, um, and I thought like in theater you do a workshop, you don't just send the play out into the world, you do practice workshops. And I thought, why don't we do that for movies? So um, I used my office after hours. I, like, I got permission to, uh, to shoot in the office. So I did a whole corporate espionage drama uh, about the snack industry. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of insider. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, yeah there's, it's a brutal. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, bad. Cut yeah. And were you riding on the subway? Were you taking the subway to? I, I was riding on the subway. I wasn't riding on the subway. Ah, um, okay. I was. I was absorbing the world in so many ways. Sure. Uh, <laughs> through every orifice. Oh yeah. Um, but <laughs> but uh, no, I, I I I tended to write either um, at desks or um, at home in the morning before. Like I'd wake up at like four and write for an hour before getting ready to go. And did anyone question you and say, well, what are you doing with this note? What is this notebook that you're writing? Oh, yeah. Well, everyone was like, oh, he's a writer. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, everyone knew that, that. And there wasn't a Harriet the Spy thing where it's like, what are you writing about us? Um, right. But there was, there was a sense of like, he's not really, an, uh, at the time, it was called a secretary, um, which I was. Um, yeah, no, people understood that I was trying to get out of what I was doing and to be something else. And that was generally looked well upon. People, people didn't give me a hard time. 